So what is the bottom of the arc? What is the lowest point of the swing? Uh, tour players would have their setup be somewhere, uh, or have their impact be somewhere in something like this. Weight definitely pushing off the right foot, or not necessarily pushing, but off the right foot, most of it. They'll have their hands about four to six inches in front of the ball, and they'll have their club striking the ball on the way down, hitting it. The ball's going to leave the club face, and the club's going to start its divot. So the, it doesn't even enter the turf until after the ball's gone. And the club goes through the turf for about eight inches, and then it exits. The lowest point of that arc, believe it or not, is about four inches on the target side of the ball. So here's the ball. Wherever you play it in your swing, uh, most tour players play mid-iron in the middle of their stance, some more toward the, forward, toward the front. But the lowest point of their swing is going to be about four inches on the target side. So the club will hit the ball. The club will then enter the turf, go through, get to its deepest point here, and then start exiting, and exit there. So that's that variable. That's the next, the maybe the most important, but one of the most important variables in hitting an iron shot or hitting a shot off the ground. It's imperative that the club strike the ball. If nothing else, it's got to strike it like a tiny, tiny bit on the downswing. But if it strikes it on the upswing, you're toast. Because if you've hit the ground first, and then your club's going up, if your club's slowed down a bunch. So it's not going to hit it with any force. If you've missed the ground, you hit thin. So it, it doesn't go like it's supposed to. The, the ball's supposed to hit in the center of the club face. And the only way to hit the center of the club face is to have the club strike the ball on its way down. You can see that. Hopefully you can see that club. In order to hit it, have the club face contact the ball in the center, it's got to be leaning forward slightly. Here, the ball's not hitting the face in the center, so you're not going to get maximum output. So that's contact. That's the third variable. It's a thing we didn't talk about when we were talking about the ball flight loss. The other thing we're going to talk about in this video, the thing that I'm most excited about, is the club face. Now, when I first, one of the biggest influences in, in my career probably, um, 2005, 6, 7, uh, I was working a lot with Paul Montano in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, he and I worked with Jim Hardy. They, they both teach, uh, or Paul kind of teaches along with Jim Hardy, the one plane and two plane swings. And uh, I was working really hard on my golf swing and hitting balls every day, and Paul helped me a lot. And one of the things I remember reading in the Jim Hardy Plain Truth for Golfers book was that the club face should stay square to the arc till about halfway back. And then it would rotate open and then it would come back and square to the arc again and come through. That's the first guy I ever even heard say that the club face shouldn't be toe up. Or if you're looking at it from that view, like this. He's the first guy that I actually saw or heard of suggesting that the face stay square. Now, uh, he also said that once the club got a, about, you know, past there, it really couldn't stay square anymore. He said it had to rotate open 90 degrees to the plane and then rotate closed um, coming down. So about a year and a half ago, um, I was working really hard on my golf swing. I'm trying to compete on the mini tours right now. And uh, I was watching a lot of videos on YouTube looking for really, really consistent golf swings. And, um, if you watch any golf at all, you know that Steve Stricker is one of the most consistent players year in and year out. He's not just a good iron player, he's really consistent with his driver. Uh, at the Green Briar this year, he actually uh, was in the top of the field. I don't think he led the field in driving distance, but he was in the top of the field in driving distance, which means his swing is efficient and that it hits the ball really straight, but it's also explosive. It hits the ball far. As far as these guys are hitting it on tour today, to see a guy who doesn't, who says he doesn't cock his wrists at all, hit it 300 more yards with his driver is, uh, it's pretty phenomenal. So, needless to say, I kind of got into trying to replicate the moves Steve Stricker was making in his swing. I went over and watched him at the Riviera Country Club at the Los Angeles Open or Farmers Insurance or whatever it's called. Um, Northern Trust is what it's called. But I, I went over and watched him. And the one thing that you don't see a lot of on TV is what he does in his rehearsal swings. And, and Steve, almost every time, he'll kind of set up beside it, 
He'll, he'll set his hands well in front of the club head, rock his shoulders back, rock his shoulders through, rock back, rock through. And this really clicked. I was like, that's it. That's what he does. He presets impact. The sense of the club being square, locked in, hands forward, club face just ready to hit the ball. You can't see it from down the line. When the camera's behind where they love to be, you can't see that he, he presets. He gets in there and he's here, and then he kind of rocks his hands forward a bit, and you see him kind of rock his knee in, and that's when he starts it. And from there, he just turns his shoulders back, and he turns his shoulders through. And so, when I was watching Steve Stricker swing, I noticed for the first time a player who kept the club face shut, so to speak, on the backswing for a really long period of time, if not all the way to the top on most swings, on a lot of swings. Um, so you hear a lot now, um, a lot more guys are doing this. Uh, Adam Scott even, I, I mean a year and a half ago I had to struggle to find somebody that was doing this. The only two guys I could find were Steve Stricker and Ryo Ishikawa. Now Ryo Ishikawa, um, who's a really, really nice guy, um, he was doing this, he's been doing this all along as far as I know. But in his swing, you can find videos from a couple years ago, his club face was here in the backswing which looks shut, which most people would call shut. Peter Costas, uh, the announcer, would say for sure that that's shut. But what we're seeing is more and more players are playing from here. And I think the reason they're playing from there is, is they're finding the same thing that I found. It's really, really consistent. The club face doesn't roll open, and so that means that you don't have to wait, drop, and roll closed. You can kind of just play with a shoulder turn and a body move. So it really becomes a shoulder swing and a shoulder turn and a shoulder pivot. Um, the, the thing about this swing that I'm teaching um, that's the, the best, the most exciting thing is from an absolute beginner, uh, I had a guy, I'm not going to tell you who he is because he probably wouldn't love it if I was broadcasting it to the world, but he was an absolute beginner. He's left-handed. And he came to me and said, Sam, you know, I, I really want to get good at golf. I, I work in, in an industry that would really help if I got good at golf, and I want to join a private club. And so I said, okay, well, let's see if you can learn this, and let's try this. So we did. We started with putting, and uh, we'll get to that later on down the road. But we started with putting, and I taught him this notion that the club face doesn't rotate, that we kind of preset our impact position and then just rock our shoulders. And uh, he said, okay, that's simple enough. I like that. That seems easy. I can handle that. So we went to a chip shot after that, or uh, yeah, a chip shot. And we did the same thing. We preset our hands forward, locked them in place with a square club face, and then just rotated our shoulders back and through. Just our shoulders. No hands, no wrists, no rolling of the face, no opening, no hinging, no nothing. And then we went, in our next lesson, we went up uh, the scale to a pitch shot. 40 or 50 yard pitch shot with a sand wedge where we're just kind of rocking our shoulders back to about right here. And then rocking them through to there. So we were setting the same way we set the week before, preset with our hands forward, turn our shoulders back, turn our shoulders through. And all the while, we were talking about where this club, how this club reaches its low point, and how it needs to strike the ball cleanly. We got into the irons, a little bit bigger swing, pitching wedge, 9-iron, 8-iron, 7-iron, we just set, and we said, okay, now we've got a little bit more focus on where the club reaches its low point. So the club's got to bottom out a little bit in front of the golf ball, or on the target side of the golf ball. But I still want you to make your same swing. Preset the wrist forward, club face square, turn the shoulders back, turn it through. Really, really consistent with the irons. And we went up to a three-wood and then up to a driver. The driver was a nightmare. Uh, we spent like three weeks on it. And finally, I took him up to uh, KZG, which is a club fitting company, or it's a it's a manufacturer, but they're extremely um, precise club fitter. So we went up to KZG headquarters in Hollywood. I fit him. We found a driver that was perfect for a swing. The driver he was hitting somehow he had gotten this driver. I won't say the name of the company, but um, it said stiff, and it. When I checked the frequency of the shaft and, and uh, the flex and everything, it was measuring at almost like ladies' flex, 230 CPM cycles per minute on a 45-inch driver, which is just really, really low to have an S marked on it. So hopefully that was just one one mistake out of many. But um, it worked all the way through to the driver. 
Uh, since then, I've had a lot of confidence. Everybody that I've taught this method has picked it up really quickly. It's not complex. It's not complicated. There are just a couple things that you really have to understand. One of which is that we're pre-setting impact. So uh, if you're familiar with the golfing machine, maybe you are, maybe you're not. Um, some people are, some people aren't. They talk about preset, or, uh, preset fix, I think. Um, impact fix. They talk about you know, what, it would, what it's going to feel like at impact, where you're going to be at impact. Flat left wrist, right wrist bent, weight left, line of compression. All these things are, are um, fixed, set up. So they don't suggest that you start there for your full swing. I am actually suggesting that you start a little closer to there. Maybe not here, where you'd actually be at impact. But maybe just like, you know, maybe preset so that your hands are four inches in front of the club head with an iron. Ball in the middle of your stance, hands forward. So you're preset here with the face square to the target. And from there, all you have to do now is turn your shoulders. It's just. You don't have to think about your hands or arms or anything, just turn your shoulders. If you turn your shoulders 90 degrees, you're done. That's all the farther back you have to go. And check the tour players. Nobody, not nobody, almost everybody on tour plays their iron shots less than parallel. It's just a full shoulder turn, that's all. You just have to make a full shoulder turn. And then from there you just turn the rest of the way through. The preset's going to put your hands ahead of the club head again at the bottom so that you'll hit the ball first, you won't hit the ground. So you'll hit the ball first and continue to turn out, and the ball will be gone. It'll go really straight. So <clears throat> hopefully all this makes sense for you. It's the first time I've ever tried to do this over the internet. And I've been skeptical of it up until this point. I guess it's not over the internet. Maybe you downloaded this or got this from a friend. But um, I was skeptical or a little bit scared maybe of doing this online or in a place where somebody couldn't talk to me about it because I thought there might be a lot of skepticism saying, come on, you can't play with the club face completely square all the way around. But I'm telling you, I haven't had anyone that hasn't been able to. Everyone I've taught this has been hitting a draw, and they've been hitting it flush, and they've been scoring ridiculously well. I mean, you'll see some comments um, as you're looking at these videos. I've got some students that you wouldn't even believe it. Six months into the game, and they're breaking 80. And it's it's kind of ridiculous. It's, it's really a cool thing. So give it a chance. Give it a try. I'm going to hit one more shot for you just to prove that that one that I hit at the beginning of the lesson was, uh, wasn't a fluke. Um, I'm going to go through the same routine I go through on every shot. Preset my hands above the ball. I actually do this behind the ball when I'm playing. But presetting and just feeling my shoulders turn back and turn through. Keeping the face square the whole time. I'm not cocking my wrists or hinging them any special way. I'm just presetting, turning back, and turning through. So here we go. Uh, so that one's a little bit right. 18.6 feet away from the target, um, but I'll take that at 182 yards. If I'm 18 feet, I think I've done a pretty good job. So no fluke, no. This isn't uh, not making this up. It, it works. It works for me, and it works for everyone I've talked to. So that's just the golf swing. We're gonna get on to the rest of it. How to perform that swing on the course every time, and then some short game stuff that's gonna help as well. So stay tuned for the other stuff. And thanks for watching.